Hello viewers, in this discussion video, we will delve into the intricacies of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, exploring its mechanism, symptoms, diagnosis, as well as management. So join me and let's unpack the knowledge, but don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Right, so just imagine a matured and a small clones of B lymphocytic cells. Why are they matured? Because they have escaped apoptosis. They have escaped cell death. If you escape cell death, then you must be matured. So it's important to understand that chronic lymphocytic leukemia is a malignant lymphoproliferative disorder with an abnormal clonal expansion of these matured small B cells that have escaped apoptosis. Now, these B cells then accumulate by infiltrating the peripheral blood, the lymphoid tissues, as well as the bone marrow. And what can happen is that they can eventually crowd out the normal blood cells or even impair the production of normal blood cells. Now, these chronic lymphocytic leukemic cells may express a signal transducing molecules such as CD5, CD19, CD20, and CD23 on its surface. It actually also expresses a very weak immunoglobulins on its surface, meaning these clonal cells lack antigenic stimulation. In other words, they're not able to produce proper immunoglobulins to combat infections. Hence, patients with this disorder are susceptible to recurrent infections. And the clonal expansion also leads to a hypermetabolic state. All right, so here we have a very useful medical mnemonic, very instrumental. Why? Because it will help you memorize the right staging system. It will also help you organize your thoughts when it comes to the clinical manifestations of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So it starts with remembering CLL, that is chronic lymphocytic leukemia, set. So C, think of clonal disorder of B lymphocytes. These lymphocytes are small and matured and they have escaped apoptosis and they have infiltrated the lymphoid tissues, the peripheral blood, as well as the bone marrow. They have overcrowded the bone marrow and they can prevent the production of normal cells. Now, constitutional symptoms here, I mean, it can be fever, malaise, weight loss, sweating, or loss of appetite. So this marks the beginning of the rise staging system. Lymphocytosis. Lymphocytosis is usually the hallmark of the disease. And so when you have only lymphocytosis, it is a stage zero. And this is also a low risk disease. Usually lymphoid cells are greater than 30%. Stage one is lymphoadenopathy. So the lymph nodes are usually enlarged, rubbery, non-tender nodes. They may enlarge gradually, but they may also regress occasionally. They can block and obstruct lymphatic vessels as well. Stage two marks or stage two is splenomegaly. Stage three is erythrocytopenia, in other words, anemia. And stage four, thrombocytopenia. So patients may also have impairment in primary hemostasis as a result of thrombocytopenia. Well, generally speaking, it may progress slowly over several years without noticeable symptoms in the early stages. Another important thing you could add to the medical mnemonic is compromise, compromise of the immune system. And so patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia are prone or they are predisposed to recurrent infections that can be a bacteria, a viral, such as herpes, or a fungal infection because of the incompetent immune globulins that are produced. The Binet staging system for chronic lymphocytic leukemia has three stages. Stage A, there is three or less groups of enlarged lymph nodes involved. Stage B, there is three or more groups of enlarged lymph nodes involved and anemia or thrombocytopenia is classified as stage C 
by the Binet staging system. Diagnostics. So this may be a finding on a routine blood workup. In other words, patients may be asymptomatic, and this disorder usually affects the elderly population above 50 years. Isolated lymphocytosis is usually the hallmark. A bone marrow biopsy may show infiltration with small matured lymphocytes and smudge cells. These are fragile lymphocytes. Cell flow cytometry may show CD19 or CD5, CD23, or CD38. In fact, it has been shown that CD23 as well as beta-2 microglobulin correlates with the rate of progression of the disorder as well as the bulkiness of the disease. And a full blood count would show signs of anemia. In other words, the HB may be low. There may be a decline in the neutrophils. There may be a decrease in the platelets. And of course, there may be an increase in the uric acid levels, which may predispose the patient to gout. Treatment. So early indolent chronic lymphocytic leukemia require no specific therapy. There are three agents that are very effective if used together. Bilderabin, rituximab, and cyclophosphamide. Hence, they are recommended as the first-line treatment. Rituximab dexamethasone, referred to as RDEX, is used during disease relapse or as a debulking agent prior to stem cell transplant. Allogenic transplantation may also offer curative therapy. Bendamustin, alemtuzumab, and ofatumumab may also be used if the first-line agents fail. Radiotherapy may be used for lymphoadenopathy, and transfusions as well as IV immunoglobulin may be used for recurrent infections. Thank you and I hope this was useful. If you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye.